Hey guys, so today I'm gonna be doing some touch and goes. I was originally planning to do it cross country, but the ceilings are pretty low. If you can uh, see uh, from here, they're kind of just hovering. So there's a lot of helicopter activity and then there's a lot of airplane activity. It stays pretty busy here. So I'm gonna bring you guys along. Hopefully y'all enjoy. And um, hopefully I improve on my landings. So. I'm Kevin. I'm an aspiring pilot currently working on my ratings and building hours. I own a 1962 Piper Cherokee 160 that I use to share my experiences and views in general aviation. Like and subscribe to join me on my next adventure and see more awesome aviation content. As always, thanks for joining me on my journey to get fit for flight. Let's fly. So I made two little improvements. I added these little emblems because they were kind of bothering me and I kind of wanted something nice to put there and it's just the little things that matter <laughs> when it comes to aviation. And then I also added this uh, cool scoop. It basically keeps the airplane cool or it gets more airflow into the airplane while we are taxiing. You cannot use this while you are flying because it could possibly break off. But these little improvements really do make a difference. We are in an airplane for a long amount of time. Pearland Regional Airport. Automated weather observation 1741 Zulu. Wind 170 at 10. Visibility 10. Sky condition broken 2400. Broken 3300. Broken 4200. Temperature 2 niner Celsius. Dew point 2 3 Celsius. Altimeter 2 niner niner 5. Remarks. Density altitude 1700. Airline traffic. Two eight four three train. Left downwind. One by one four. Just a little bit about Pearland. It is right under the Bravo, right under the 2000 foot shelf for the Bravo. Pearland is an uncontrolled airport. Uncontrolled meaning that you make all your calls as a pilot and then there is no control tower um, directing traffic within the area. So it's the pilot's responsibility to maintain separation and, and make sure to announce the things that they are doing. As you can see, the Houston Bravo airspace is very near to this airport and you have to keep a tight base to final, making sure not to drift into the Bravo airspace. Got somebody on base there or in the pattern. It... And Paraline traffic, Cherokee 3843 is turning left downwind runway 14 and we've got that traffic to the east inside. Paraline traffic, Cherokee 5467 Whiskey, uh, we will be uh, departing 1-4 and joining the pattern, Pearland traffic. So throughout this video, I'm going to be popping in and discussing my thought process during touch and goes and basically telling you what is on my mind at certain points in the flight. Generally, when I'm taking off, I like to have the crosswind correction in already, and then I confirm the runway runway one four. Once I push in the throttle, the engine instruments are in the green. Turn traffic, three, four, three, turning left base, runway one four. And I, once I have that airspeed built up, I rotate at 55 and climb for VX. Generally on my upwind or departure leg, I like to at least get 500 feet of clearance and then begin my crosswind turn. Pearland traffic, Cherokee 5467 Whiskey on left crosswind for 1 4 Pearland traffic.
Fairline traffic, Cherokee 5467 Whiskey on left downwind for 1 4 Fairline traffic. On downwind, once I'm a beam the numbers, I do like to pull carburetor heat and then add 10 degrees of flaps, just preparing for that landing. On this video, I'm actually learning a lot while I'm editing, and I want to point out a couple of mistakes I'm making. Uh, one of the mistakes I did make was I left in the scoop. Parallel traffic, 3843, turning left, possible, runway 14. Like I said earlier, the scoop is only supposed to be used during ground operations and taxi and I left it in there. It's not on my checklist so I'm actually going to add it to my checklist before I take off. I've read on groups that people have left it in and it's been sucked out of the airplane and it can definitely be a potential dangerous situation if you leave that in during flight. Luckily I was not flying at high air speeds for a long amount of time. This wasn't my best traffic pattern. All the turns weren't as sharp as they should have been. And I actually should have kept the traffic pattern a lot tighter. I was pretty close into drifting into the Bravo airspace. So it being my first pa traffic pattern, after that, I try to keep it pretty tight. Especially you want to always practice your traffic patterns where if your engine goes out, you can make you can always make the runway. Traffic Cherokee 5467 Whiskey on short final for 1 4 Pearland traffic. Pearland traffic 343, turn left face, runway 1 4. It has been a while since I've done touch and goes and actually it's my first time doing touch and goes in this airplane. In reconfiguring the airplane, once you are on the ground, you keep your crosswind correction in, you get flaps zero, and then you take out the carburetor heat. As you can see, I'm climbing fairly slowly and I was trying to figure out why I am climbing very slowly. So I began to assess and then once I make the correction of putting in that carburetor heat, my climb rate increased significantly. So I forgot to pull out my carburetor heat. I was wondering why I wasn't climbing as fast. So uh, I guess that guy's going to be chasing my tail because there's another person in the, t in the pattern. And my uh, pattern was a little bit wonky. So I'm about to turn across me. Places in Houston are pretty much sea level, so the, usually the, pa the pattern is actually a thousand. Just like you parallel traffic. Great.
So this pattern is definitely kind of wonky. Once I get to final, you can see I'm kind of drifting at an angle instead of actually going straight on into a final. Parallel traffic, Cherokee 546 of Whiskey on left, uh, base for a 1-4 parallel traffic. And the reason I believe that I'm having a little bit trouble with the traffic pattern and making those tight corners is because my airspeed management is pretty poor at this point. It's it's my second touch and go and I think I really need to improve on my airspeed management. It actually gets better throughout the session, but uh, I definitely want to point out that airspeed is very key in making a great traffic pattern. Got 500 feet. Fairline traffic, Cherokee 5467, Whiskey, and entering the left cross one for 1 4 Pillion traffic. patterns a little tighter because that's actually how they should be and um, I'll give a little more spacing for that guy the, for that guy in the back all right I got carburetor heat I'm gonna beam the numbers so carburetor heat uh, we'll go 10 flaps 10 degrees I'll go ahead and just begin my left base early. We got plenty of runway. Oh, well, this is about right, actually. Fairline traffic, Cherokee 5467 Whiskey on left base for 1 4 Fairline traffic. Parallel 
Paraline traffic, Cherokee 5467 Whiskey on a short final for 1 4 Paraline traffic. Paraline traffic, 343, turning left, final runway, 1 4. And lap zero. Like we got a headwind now, so we should be good here. And we got airspeed. Paraline traffic, Cherokee 5467 Whiskey on left, crosswind for 1 4 Paraline traffic. Paraline traffic, 2843 turning left, crosswind, runway 1 4. Airline traffic, 3843, turning left, downwind, one way, one four. Got a carburetor heat in and left. Uh, base is going to be started soon. And we got uh, 10 degrees of flood. Airline traffic, uh, pair, Cherokee 5467, whiskey on left, base for one four, airline traffic. nose down and on my base a little bit more. Plenty of airspeed. I don't know, for some reason, for some reason I uh, always try to go fast in my When I really need to be patient, kind of manage it. Airspeed. Airline traffic, 2843, turning left base, runway 14. Try to straighten up a little bit. Power in there. A little low. Oh, actually, not bad. By that flow. Carburetor heat in. Airline traffic, 343, turning left, final, runway 1 fire speed. Fairly 
traffic, Cherokee 5467, whiskey on upwind for 14 pillar traffic. Traffic Cherokee 5467 Whiskey on short final for one four barrel entry. Make this one a full stop. I would say in my opinion that after doing a lot of training in a Cessna 172 and then comparing it to a Cherokee 160, I feel like my Cherokee 160 is a lot easier to land. It may be that I'm growing as a pilot and my skills are improving, but the low wing Cherokee seems to be less affected by the crosswind component. And that's something I struggled with during training. Parallel traffic Cherokee 5467 Whiskey on short final for 14 parallel traffic, make this a full stop. Parallel traffic, 3843, turning left, phase, runway 14. Bad. 
So I was pretty happy with that landing for the last landing of the day. Make sure to like and subscribe for more aviation content. I'm almost to a thousand, so if you could please help me get there, I would really appreciate it. Weather is not bad today, but I am still sweating. It is still pretty hot. There's a couple things I need to improve on, but uh, as I'm finishing up, I probably, just to keep myself intact, I need to manage my airspeed a little better. Sorry, I'm adjusting this vent right now, just to close up. I need to manage my airspeed a lot better. I had someone else in the traffic, so I did feel a little rush, but that shouldn't affect my flying. I didn't put in that scoop right away. Uh, I guess I was enjoying the air a little bit too much. I just got it today, so I need to remember to put that in because uh, it's definitely not supposed to be used in flight. Luckily, uh, the air speeds weren't that excessive where, I, where it became dangerous, but um, definitely need to remember that. And I need to remember to switch my fuel tanks when I'm just in the pattern because it's it passed around 45 minutes, but I probably should have just switched them um, in 30 minutes if I wasn't gonna be flying too long. Um, so that's pretty much it but thanks for joining me as I do the touch and goes because I'm really trying to get better and um, bring you guys along on that journey as always guys thanks for joining me on my journey to get fit for flight we'll see you later guys